Well, um, let's go for another dram, shall we? Um, I have seen this one on the shelf many times, and I have seen other people talking about it and reviewing it, and the reviews have been um, good, good reviews. The uh, but, well, there's one who ex one reviewer or whiskey vlogger who was expecting it to be much more peaty than it is. It's a slightly peated. This one is, uh, I may have tried it at a whiskey festival a couple years back, um, but I never got a bottle, and I don't know why I never got around to getting a bottle. This is the uh, the Kubakan. I probably mispronounced the snot out of it, but um, it's saying uh, Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, Light Smoke, Intertwined, with rich citrus and exotic spices. So this, based on that description, it's going to be nice. <laughs> and here's the story. I've heard this before, but maybe you haven't, so I'm going to read it. Kubakan has stocked residents of the remote highland village of Tamatan for many centuries. His legend embellished by the hellhound's increasingly fractious behavior. Sightings are rare. Once in a generation, always terrifying. A distillery worker out walking late was once relentlessly pursued by an imposing black beast, steam spiraling from flared nostrils, teeth bared. Compelled beyond all natural reason to feel the hound's dense fur, he stopped and reached out, hand trembling, only to see the ghostly specter, Kubakan, dissolve before his eyes, leaving nothing but a vacuum of deathly silence and an inky blue cloud of smoke, soon spirited away across the peat moorland. <laughs> it's quite a story. <laughs> it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume. It is a 750 ml bottle, distilled and bottled naturally in Scotland. Now, Tomatin, the first Tomatin I ever tried aside from maybe a taste of Kubakan at a whiskey festival, where, of course, when you're at a whiskey festival, you taste so many things you can't really pick them apart. So I don't remember what it's like. However, sometime after that, I went to a, a whiskey bar, and in this whiskey bar, I had a Tomatin 15. The Tomatin 15 had exactly what I was, what I liked at the time, and I still like it a lot. Maturation in in bottle bourbon barrels, you know, ex bourbon barrels, the Tomatin Fifteen. I tried that at a whiskey bar, and it was delicious. I loved it immediately. Around that time, it stopped becoming available in the stores. So I tried the Tomatin Twelve. I was not too crazy about the Tomatin 12. It didn't have a lot of flavor, or it didn't have enough flavor for me. Um, I don't know, was it bottled at 40 or 43 percent alcohol by volume? I found it to be a little bit disappointing. That was the Tomatin 12. Other people loved the Tomatin 12, but after trying the 15, the 12 just didn't. And then there's an 18, which I never really, I never bought the 18. I think I saw it on the shelf tonight, actually. And uh, it was a little on the, well, it was on the pricey side. So I didn't go for it. But I have not tried the Kubakan. I also have another Tomatin in my home bar. It's the um, Tomatin the Legacy. I think it's called Legacy. And that one is aged in ex-bourbon barrels to begin with. And then it's finished in virgin oak, which is wonderful because that virgin oak gives it a little more uh, of the um, of the toffee and the, um, the the caramel and the vanilla notes than you would normally get. And it's a non-age statement whiskey. This one also is non-age statement, but at 46% alcohol by volume, which should be really nice. Let's uh, grab this. This Kubakan Hellhound. Yeah. And 
there's the bottle, the Kumokan, or Kumokan, or <laughs> quite a design on there. You can make it out. All right. So let's get this tomato open. Okay. Oh, that came out really good. Glug, 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 glug. Mm. That should be sufficient for tasting. So, yep, never had a bottle of this before, and uh, the last one I had was a famous grouse, uh, smoky black, which was interesting. But we're talking about Kubakan this time. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting spices. Pepper. There's a lot of peppery initially. Pepper. Citrus. It's kind of a lemony citrus. Maybe some orange. Orange peel. And spicy, peppery, peppery. Spicy, like a spice tree almost. And bananas, along with the lemon and the, the uh, orange. Might be getting a bit of pear in there too. A lot of fruits. Fruits, citrus fruits, light fruits, spicy. Now in that spice, that's where the that's where the peat smoke might be hiding. I'm thinking it's more of a bonfire peat than a medicinal, but so far, yeah, it's pretty easy to pick this one out. Fruit and spice. Not unpleasant at all. It's very nice. This might be the best tomato I've ever tried. But of course that 15 was glorious. This might be even better than the Legacy because it's got a stronger alcohol content. Mm. Beautiful nose. Spicy, fruity, beautiful. Along with oranges, I'm getting more tangerines, little tangerine kind of oranges. Ah. Yeah, that's spicy. Beautiful. Okay, let's um, go for the taste. I can't see it. I can't see what time we're at. Can't see anything. I see better like this <coughs> than I would. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Now I can see it's nine minutes and I haven't tasted it yet. Oh, do I ever go on? Some people don't like that. Their problem. Mm. Mm. Fruity oranges, lemons, some banana, a little hint of pear perhaps. Nice fruit, fruits, peppers, uh, pepper spice, not red peppers or jalapenos or anything like that. Pepper.
Smell beautiful. Bit of an oily feel to it as well. That pepper, and there's some other spices in there. That lingers on the tongue. That just has a spicy aftertaste. Where first you get hit by fruit, like orange, lemon, banana, pear. Then, then you get spices. You get maybe, well, you get sure enough, you get pepper, you get some salt, and it's a, it's a bit of a salty note too. Salt, pepper, um, I don't know what else, maybe a bit of, try that again. Pepper, cloves. It's just a mix of spices, a bit salty. And that spicy note just, just lingers on. Beautiful spicy note. So at first you get fruit, then you get spices. The fruits disappear. You get past the fruit and you, you don't taste them anymore. You don't smell them either. Well, you do a little bit. But it's nice. This is a beautiful whiskey as well. Very nicely made. Who cares if it doesn't have an age statement? It's it's um, looks like it's aged in a mixture of. Um, you know where the spice may be coming from? It may be coming from um, European oak ex sherry casks. Doesn't say how this was aged, but you, and you're getting some. Yeah, that spiciness is probably a mixture of the peat smoke and European ex sherry casks. Um, I can't say for sure what caused what to be where, but this is very nice. Um, not getting that much smoke out of it. There might be 10, 10 to 12 parts per million. It's very, very lightly peated. And if you're not a fan of peat, you may still like this one because it doesn't, the peat doesn't jump out at you. The bonfire doesn't jump out at you because there's too much spice there. However, without any smoke in it, this whiskey would be a lot different, I'm sure. Still, this is a very enjoyable dram. I've, I've so far, the, the two whiskeys, well, actually the three whiskeys, three of the, actually every whiskey I bought this week has got to be fantastic because the grouse was good. Great King Street I've had before, which is wonderful. This stuff is nice. Oh, by the way. I have one more whiskey to do this week or that I bought now. When you see this might be two weeks from now, I don't know. But anyway, uh, on behalf of uh, Tomatin Kubakan, Slancha. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Food quick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>